So in the real world, I'm always interested in the real world. Hopefully you are too. So in the real world, how, how does this actually get used? There's, there's two, there are many ways in which it's used, but there are two very common ways which may be of interest uh, to you depending on where you want to go in marketing or finance or quantity, general analytical fields of business, et cetera. Track number one, for this might be if you're interested in becoming a CFO. So that, that would fit right in with what we've been working on here. So let's go a little further with the CFO. So SSI CFO asked us to do this because she is interested in actually getting an optimal cap structure for the firm. And so let's say that the market value of the equity is 100 million and D, the debt of the firm as we know is zero when she gives us this assignment. And we found for her that the optimum capital structure is 40%. So what's she going to do if she wants to recapitalize the company to move it into the optimum capital structure? she's going to have to do some accounting stuff. Oh my God, you thought you had finally gotten over accounting. You never get over accounting in finance, okay? So how could she do this? Well, she'd go out to Wells Fargo, JP Morgan Chase, Bank of China, something like that, and she would want to get a loan for $40 million. So that means she's gonna get cash of 40 million from the loan and cash is an asset, right? So I'll put an A there and she's paying for that. Here's where the risk increases, right? She has the loan liability now, the firm does, SCI does. She's just the CFO. She's operating as an agent for the firm. So the firm now has this liability. So that's step number one. So now she's got this $40 million. What does she do with that $40 million? Well, she goes out on the marketplace. She calls interactive brokers. She calls E-Trade and she has them on the company's behalf buy back $40 million uh, worth of the shares of the company. Remember there's a hundred million total. So these, these get bought back. So what happens when you buyback shares, when you issue shares, it's paid in capital, right? So when you buy them back, it's got to be the same thing. It's got to be paid in capital, and that's going to be the 40 million buyback shares. So she's buying back those shares, and that's equity, right? Paid in capital is part of equity. And what she do when she buys back those shares? She throws those shares into the burn barrel. She's reducing the share count, right? That's the idea. She buys them back and she burns them. And I know you accounting majors know they really go into treasury, share stock, but whatever. That's not really important for us. A good, simple way to think about it, which always works in finance, is you just say you're throwing those shares in a burn barrel and burning them. So now the CR is, what did she do to buy back those 40 million shares? That was the cash, 40 million. And that was the cash that went out the door to the broker, the broker used to buy back the shares. And that's it. That's one way in the real world that optimum capital structure is used. The second way in the real world, this is used all the time, is if you are a private equity firm and you could be thinking of buying SSI for the asking price of 100 million, and that would give you 100% of SSI stock. So now we have a scenario where SSI is for sale, for it's got no debt, it's for sale. The asking price for all of its shares, 100% of its stock is 100 million. So if you're the private equity firm and you want to optimize SSI's capital structure after you've purchased it, how are you going to do this? This is something private equity firms do all the time. When they buy a firm, they recapitalize it into what they believe is the optimum capital structure. So here's how it would go. So first thing you note is that purchase price is 100, and that's going to be comprised of D, which is the loan going to be taken out by the company, and E is going to be your own funds. So here we have it. So E is going to be your firm's own funds that you're going to put to pay a portion of this purchase price. And D is going to be a loan taken out not by you. This is, this is very important. This is a loan that's going to be taken out by 
SSI, your target takeover company itself, on the day of the sale. So on the day of the sale, the company takes out the loan, and it's going to be for $40 million, and you put in $60 million of your own funds. You put all these funds into a wheelbarrow, and you take this wheelbarrow, the $100 million, over to the prior owners of the firm, and they get the wheelbarrow of $100 million, and you get all the shares of stock. So how has that worked here? We've got so we know that we've got our 40% debt to enterprise value is what we want. So we know that we're going to need a loan. The company is going to have to take out a loan of 40 million. So again, you're going to purchase SCI with 60 million of your own funds and with 40 million from a loan taken out by SSI on the day of closing. So again, you get your wheelbarrow and you put in 60 million of your own funds and you get SSI to get this loan to it from JP Morgan Chase and you throw their 40 million in the wheelbarrow. You take the wheelbarrow over to the prior owners. You give them the total of the 100 million that they demand to give up all their shares. You get all the shares. Okay, and that's it. For those of you who can't sleep without learning more about this, there's a whole section here on finding optimum capital structure, not for all stakeholders, but for equity investors. It's incredibly exciting. Um, it's also in the textbook in prose form. So if you're super interested, you're encouraged to look at that. But as you can see, it's in gray, so you're not going to get homework on it. You're not going to get an in-class quiz on it. You are not going to be responsible for it on the next exam. So for all those reasons, I think I'll call it a project right now and look forward to catching up with you again soon. Take care.